What's up everybody? So every time we get a submission to us to look at a product for mass manufacturing, there's always the question of how can we make this more affordable? So we're gonna talk about why 3D printed parts can be as expensive as they are and how to fix that. So there's a few main factors that go into the cost of a 3D printed part. There are the raw materials that go into it, the overall design of the part that then feeds into downstream labor and effort, and then the ultimate scale of how many parts you're actually gonna produce and in what way. So let's break those down. First of all, the raw materials. Well, going into any sort of manufacturing process, you have the raw materials like plastic in our case, and then you also have the raw materials of human labor. So those are dependent upon how your part is kind of made. And we'll, again, we'll talk about that in design in just a second. But the raw materials make a big difference. So when you submit a part for mass production, you should know what is the material you want to use or have a detailed description of what you need your part to do. That will then allow us to make recommendations about materials that will work and also consider the cost of those materials in it. For example, if you're requesting a part be made out of ABS, does it really need that chemical plastic or can it be done with something like PETG or even PLA or something along that, which are more affordable than ABS to mass produce because they're easier to work with and lower cost resins. But then you have the labor that goes into it and that's dependent on how your part is designed. So let's just move ahead in the, into the design. The design of the piece is the single most important batch of decisions you can possibly make. How you design a part adds to the labor. If it needs a lot of support removal, that will make the part more expensive. If it's a part that is designed where it has failure modes in it, like something that can warp or an overhang that can be a little bit deformed or some kind of key feature that isn't well designed, then that can lead to failure down the line and increase the cost of the part. This comes up most often when people have an injection molded design and they try to 3D print it. That is a terrible decision. That is like trying to put a square peg into a round hole. They are different processes and they are not meant to create the same thing as the other. If you try to take an injection molded design and 3D print it, you will be disappointed because it's not the same process. 3D printing has different rules. Now, 3D printing is not an inferior process. It can make equivalent functional parts to injection molding, but they will look different and they need to be designed differently. So early on in your project, if you are able to do a design review, reach out and let us talk to you about that or let whatever your contract manufacturer is talk to you about it to make sure that your part is optimized for the process that you want to use. Because if you're trying to pigeonhole something into a manufacturing process without optimizing, then it will increase cost. And last but not least, you have volume, the ultimate quantity of parts that you're going to make. A lot of folks consider 3D printing to be a prototyping technology, which is not the case. 3D printing can affordably produce tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of parts affordably. But most people consider it prototyping, and if you are only making one single piece, that's going to be expensive. But since everybody has been making one single piece with 3D printing, it has a reputation as being expensive. But that is apples to oranges. Mass production has different economies of scales and different advantages that prototyping does not. Simply because you 3D printed a part and it cost $1,000 does not mean that every part after that is going to cost $1,000. At the front, with that large single prototype, you had to talk to an engineer. They had to do all the setup. They had to source the correct material. They had to do specs and back and forth conversations with you, all of which cost money. And all of that money has to be gotten back in that single piece. Now, if you were doing a mass production run, all of that work now is really small compared to the total volume of parts and can be amortized over all of those pieces, broken up and distributed among them. So if you initially had a part that cost $1,000, but then you come back and you want a thousand more parts, it is conceivable that it could go down to a dollar per part. And then there's just the economies of it. The difference between buying a single spool of material, which costs 50 to hundred dollars versus buying tons of material for mass production changes the cost of it. So if you are planning to mass produce a product, when you reach out to the contract manufacturer, like us, make sure that you set the expectations of what you wanna do. Do you want just one part or do you just want 100 parts? 
because it's going to be reasonably expensive. But if you want 10,000 or 100,000 parts, state that up front so that the scope of the project is clear. Now, there's still verification runs up front that will be more expensive to produce, but that is part of that setup cost that is recouped when everything is much less expensive down the line. There's other ways to also play with this. During those mass production runs, a lot of people coming from injection molding think they need to order 10,000 pieces right off the bat and have them all delivered in a big pile. That is the least efficient way to do it if you're using additive manufacturing. Since we don't have molds, we can just continuously run at a smaller clip. We take a small component of our print farm, dedicate it to your project, and deliver pieces over time. So rather than needing 10,000 pieces in a year delivered all at once, we would deliver 1,000 pieces every month. And by doing that, we're able to distribute our effort over time. It refines the parts because iterations can be made over that time period. If you find something wrong with the pieces, you're not committed to a whole inventory that is wrong. You can update the part and then take delivery over time, which decreases your warehousing costs. And all of these other advantages add up over time. So ultimately it comes down to this. 3D printing people think is expensive because everybody's used to buying one part at a time. But in mass production, if you are making thousands of pieces, it can be made very affordable. You just need to make sure that you are choosing the correct materials and raw components that are necessary for your part, designing your part appropriately for 3D printing. Don't try to 3D print an injection molded piece. And then manage your supply chain. Understand how many parts you need over what period of time, and then work with the contract manufacturer to have them delivered at a cadence rather than all at once. And it will be a way better experience for you and way more affordable. That is how our clients are able to scale up to millions of parts per year by optimizing for this final end process and understanding that it is different from any other type of manufacturing that has existed. And that's a good thing because it creates all types of other advantages. If you want to learn more about how to design for 3D printing, check out some of our other videos around here. We talk about how to design and optimize a piece and neat tricks and tips for how to optimize for mass production to decrease the labor and use different types of materials. And then comment down below if there's other topics that you'd like us to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.